Courthouse. I want to bring back Boris Batensky. Uh, Boris? Well, it looks like uh, we're, we're seeing through social media reports that uh, the judge has found that there is a reasonable doubt. It uh, does not mean the assaults did not take place, but simply that they have not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, that's sort of the breaking words that are coming out of the uh, courtroom right now. Okay, I'm also hearing it reported from CTV News by Austin Delaney, who is at the courthouse. So once again, Gian Gomeshi found not guilty on all counts. Boris, is there even one cell in your body that is surprised? Uh, truthfully, no. Truthfully, no. This is a this is an outcome that I we've been discussing on air for really the last few days of the trial itself before we had the five week break to to come back with a verdict. So I'm not surprised uh, for all the reasons we've been talking about. There were significant frailties, and that's what uh, Justice Horkins finished with. He said there were serious deficiencies, and it leaves the court with a reasonable doubt. Uh, not that these events did not happen, but it's impossible to know what actually did. What actually did. Okay, I want to show everyone a shot uh, not too far from where CTV's Miranda Anthesel is standing, and that is a shot of a podium with a number of microphones. And it's interesting because following these events, uh, these decisions, Boris, we'll often see people talking. Uh, sure. <laughs> who do you think might talk today? Will it be Gian Gomeshi? Will it be his defense lawyer, Marie Hennen? Will it be Lucy Ducouter? If you had to guess, who do you think is, is going to want to address the media following this? And I'll repeat it again, not guilty verdict for Gian Gomeshi. Yeah, I, I, normally if this was uh, the end of the line for Mr. Gomeshi, if he had no other charges, I would expect that there would be some kind of press conference either with him or, with, or more likely with his legal team. But he has uh, another trial coming up in June. That's correct. And because of that, uh, I, if I had to guess, I, and it is really guessing at this point, you, you may see something from him that would be brief. There may be something said by his lawyers, I would imagine, uh, perhaps by him, but, but perhaps um, uh, something that's less fulsome than it would be otherwise. Now, I, I just want to uh, sort of add one other comment. There are two aspects to Mr. Gomeshi here. There's the Mr. Gomeshi defendant before the court, and he still is that because he still has that case outstanding in, uh, in June. But he also is Mr. Gomeshi, the human being, the person who doesn't have a job anymore in the industry that he worked in for many years. And to some extent, whether or not he speaks and what he says and to whom does matter, and it de depends on what his main priorities are now that he's been acquitted. So if he's solely focused on his June trial, the advice that he may well receive is to say nothing. But if he is going to take today as an opportunity to start rebuilding his image and try to rehabilitate himself in the court of public opinion, perhaps within the radio and television community, he may act slightly differently. He may use this as an opportunity to try to, to take step one to rebranding himself. What would you advise him to do if you were his defense lawyer? Well, Stay I, quiet or start the rebuild? But see, I'm a defense lawyer. So as a defense lawyer, I only care about Mr. Gomeshi as a defendant. I don't really care about Mr. Gomeshi uh, in terms of his reputation in the community. That's for other advisors who work in other fields. I mean, he will have publicists who presumably are able to give him advice. He will have a team of people giving him that type of, uh, of advice and information. So I would rely on them and ultimately make a decision. But if I'm wearing only my criminal lawyer hat, I say as little as possible. As little as possible.